Well, hello there, tech enthusiasts. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Tech Talks with J Square. I'm your host, Jetta Jones. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, like this video and leave me a comment after watching. So today we are going to discuss a very important topic, disaster recovery, or it's commonly referred to as DR. Well, technology plays such a critical role in society today, and it touches just about every industry from the airline, finance, banking, healthcare. And when technology systems go down or are unavailable, it can wreak havoc on society. And I'm not talking about social media. Imagine a healthcare organization, systems go down. Doctors can't get to test results. They can't read images in a timely fashion. And that in that scenario, it can be life threatening. Okay. You know, organizations can obviously lose money, their reputation, they can face legal consequences. So it systems are very important and they need to have disaster recovery plans in place. So what exactly is disaster recovery? Well, it is, uh, policies, procedures, and encompasses technology solutions that organizations put in place to restore IT systems if there is a major disruptive event. So what type of event? And we want to think about, think about major things, natural disaster. Cyber attack. This is huge because ransomware is on the rise and I'm going to do a lecture in the very near future about cyber security and resiliency, or there could be a major hardware or system failure. Okay. And, uh, we're going to talk about technology solutions. I'll do another comprehensive DR lecture on policies and procedures as well. But today I want to talk about, uh, what are these technology solutions? We have replication and replication, um, is real time or near real time copying data from the primary source, meaning the primary data center to some secondary location. And ideally that secondary location needs to be in another geographical location and on another network or domain to really provide protection from a natural disaster or a cyber attack. Because if the secondary site is only 20 miles away and there's some type of natural uh, disaster or some type of natural event, guess what? It is not going to be protected because it is in the same location. And then we have backups and backups are uh, point in time copies of a previous system states because they generally run only once a day after hours. So it only cap captures a specific date. Okay. So if any event happens between the last backups, well, data is going to be lost, but it's still a very good solution with specific use cases. And then we have cloud services. Many organizations are running disaster recovery as a service. Um, or they're running it in the cloud because they don't have to purchase or create or build out an infrastructure. They don't have to purchase hardware. So cloud services can be a really good, uh, DR solution. Okay. Then we have virtualization. Virtualization, um, utilizes physical hardware more efficiency efficiently. So you have one server, one physical server, you can create several virtual machines from that one physical server at your secondary site. So that's going to save uh, costs there. And then we have testing. Testing needs to happen. DR testing should happen a few times a year to make sure your plan works properly because you don't want something to happen. And then you go through your DR plan and realize it is greatly flawed. And then you're in 
a reactive state versus proactive. And you guys know that I love being proactive when it comes to IT. And then we have monitoring and alerting. So all IT systems should be monitored for um, anomalies, performance problems, hardware issues, and alerting should be set up so the proper IT system person will be alerted so they can rectify this problem as soon as possible. Um, and this is early detection. Monitoring is about early detection. So these are three, or no, I'm sorry. So these are some of the many technology solutions that should be part of a comprehensive DR plan. Okay. So I want to do a quick diagram because many people ask me, you know, or they say I have backups and that's my DR solution. Well, no backups alone is not considered a disaster recovery solution. There are a few things that need to be in place. So, so you need systems can be servers. Then you need the application because organizations run some type of mission critical application that is critical to their business. And then you need your data. So you have a primary site that has these elements. And when you set up your DR site, it also needs these same elements because guess what? If you have a backup, and you have a natural disaster and you don't have systems in place to restore that data to, you don't have the application that needs that data to provide, you know, that IT system, that is not a DR solution. Backup, having a backup and no, no place to restore it is not going to reduce downtime. So let's look at a diagram. So this diagram shows a DR center. This is a data center primary site. Okay. And within this data center, they have servers for simplicity. We're only doing one server. So this is a system. Call it a server. It's running some type of mission critical application. And then there is the data. Now this data can obviously be part of that server, or it can be part of some type of storage area network or a direct attached storage enterprise disk array, but three components, you have your DR site, of course, and then you have a system, you have applications and you have data there. So let's just mark these here. Okay. I'm sorry. And then we have a secondary site. Okay. DR and this secondary site needs to have the same systems, the same applications and the same data in place. So we have a DR site. Okay. It also has a system or server and it has data. Okay. This should be an exact replica and also want to note that organizations really as part of their planning, they have to figure out what are they mission critical workloads because you only want to um, uh, include mission critical data and applications as part of your DR solution, because this can be a very costly setup And some organizations replicate to one site, they replicate to two sites. So, or do three site type replication. So this is a very costly solution, really only recommended for mission critical workloads because not all data is equal. You know, think about you personally. I have some documents. If I lose it, lose those documents, not a big deal, but have other doc documents such as financial statements, family photos. If I lose those documents, 
that is very, very important to me. So I probably would create that type of, uh, include that type of data in my DR plan. So you have to get the data from the primary site to the secondary site. And the best way to do that is through replication. And remember, we said that replication is real time or near real time copying of data because you want these two sites to stay in sync at all times because you don't know when a natural disaster is going to happen. But regardless, if the data is constantly being copied from the primary to, to the secondary secondary site, every time that is a change, it is going to allow you to get back to business as usual. So every time there is a data, a change to the data at the primary site, it gets copied to the secondary site, either in real time, or near real time. And I'm going to do a specific lecture on the two types of replication. Async, which is not really real time or near real time, and synchronous replication, which is real time copying. And replication is generally software native to the disk array or organizations can purchase third party replication software. So every time there is a change, to primary site, it gets replicated into um, onto the secondary site. That way, this site is always production ready. Okay. And one other thing I want to add here is failover systems because you really want your DR process to be automated. So if this site goes down you want everything to automatically go to the secondary site. So in other words, a hundred percent high availability. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture, you know, just to recap policies, procedures, and technology solutions, make up DR. There's a number of tools and strategies, replication, backups, cloud services, virtualization, testing, monitoring, and alerting, and of course, failover mechanisms. And DR, the primary site has systems, which are uh, servers, application, and data. Once you have your primary source and you want to create your secondary site, you also want to have a replica of those systems, servers, applications, and you want your data to be replicated between the two sites. And I also, one other thing I want to note that DRs can be a number of different places. So it can be an actual physical DC owned by company. Okay. Or it can be that we talked about in the cloud or organizations can rent out rack space. Uh, which is um, at a co-location. That's just a third party vendor um, that allows organizations to rent out rack space to house their hardware. So they can actually have a physically um, physical building owned by the company. This is very costly, obviously, because they have to, you know, pay the energy bill. They have to pay for resources. And that building is just really there. That DR site is really just there for standby. And then uh, DR could be in the cloud or they can go rent out rack space at a uh, third party location just to house their hardware for their DR solution. OK, so I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you leave me a comment like this video, subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell, and I will see you in the next video.